Yeah, I make a lot of things as I go. You wanna come here and see if you can fit in this video? Seven minutes to relax? No, seven minutes before you start. Oh, How, song is play first, no? How long is this song? Why must it play? Anyway, what you come to understand is even if that was true, I am not a married man, keep your ways. Can you put yourself into that? What if I could turn it sideways? What kind of video do you get sideways? See, if that's why you do You think so? Yeah, ignore that, because that's just how. So you sure they're not going to see that sideways? I think they would, you know. Well, check it on your video, on your phone. It live now. Yeah, it's so <laughs> They wouldn't enjoy that. <laughs> they would not enjoy that. Oh, I saw them talking. I saw them You got to call call the name of the show to the side. Really. Cheers, you some players? No, I uh, just tell you, ignore the prompts. Yeah, well done, Phil. <laughs> I think that's the best I could do. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. In all our room? No, there's no room actually. This 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 we can I give us some time right here. You have a you have a new sense, right? I just found my new street. You know what I want to say, so I am gonna pay her. Right. So, those of you who are watching us live, I'm here with Tony Defoe. We are going to be live on 104.7 from 10. I'm going to be here till noon. If Tony could stay with me till noon, we're going to rock and roll it. Um, we're going to try and keep the live on this one screen. We'll move the thing if it's possible, if that makes sense after. But at the end of the day, the content and the audio is what you're really looking for. Um, you can tune in on 104.7. We are going to be taking calls. Um, what is the audio like now? You're hearing me, but you're hearing us good because you could tell us that in the comments. We need to know because the camera is a little far from us, so we need to know if the, um, if the audio is good. And at the end of the day, share the video, please. Cheers, does this sound? Yeah. And you have to play this full time. Huh? What's up? God's plan. God's plan? Yeah.
Aber I live at 15. Yeah, you just give me the heads up and we will go. Right? Yeah. We live right now on social media. I just like, you know. So any slack talk, we will hear. Okay? The next half will have evidence. She will have evidence. So she gonna let's have you go with Send us in now. Study ball roller. Today is SEA. Today is when? Tomorrow is SEA. I have my two. I'm starting. Hip hop. It's a lot of bad things that they wish and 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 they wish Sense and Sensibility with Robert Amar and Kevin DeFreitas. All right, good morning, Trantabago. This is Philip Edward Alexander. I am here holding on um, for Robert Amar, who is uh, otherwise occupied this morning. Kevin DeFreitas, as a lot of you may have already known, he is abroad addressing the issues his mom passed away and uh, putting things in place where that is concerned continued condolences to you kevin and the family good day to all of the one 4.7 loyal listeners good day to everybody following us on social media i'm joined in studio this morning with my co-host for the day um anthony defu he's the director of pep media and the host of the 411 a very popular social media show that takes place every tuesday night and our guy behind the Remotes on the boards is Chez. Chez, do you know that if my mic is working properly? Yeah, my wife, my mic. Yeah. Say hello. Morning, Trinidad. And let me say my wife is working properly. <laughs> 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 so much shipping. This is going on in the studio. Oh anyway, my gosh. Continue. <laughs> right. So, 628 3131 and 628 9595. We will be taking your calls throughout, throughout the show. We want to deal with issues that affect the day-to-day -day of Trinidadians and my heart goes out this morning to the parents, the families of the children preparing for that child abusive SEA exam tomorrow. Every year, for the past decade, on the day of the SEA exam, I put out an apology release to all the children of the nation apologizing that we've not yet been able to elect into office a government that understands the transition of education should not be something that separates the nation's children. We've created a prestige versus failed school system that leaves a large portion of our children behind that does not give them the education that they're entitled to. And the Progressive Empowerment Party has very strong policies where that is concerned, but I'd like to invite my co-host, Tony, to weigh in on this matter if he had anything, if he has anything to add. Well, again, welcome, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and, uh, well, Philip, thanks for having me on the show this morning. Uh, but I agree 110%. Uh, the SCA is, is, is not, it, that, that is simply a field system uh, across the board. And uh, like what you've proposed uh, within one of the policies for the PEP, uh, where we instigate or insert a GPA system, uh, I, I strongly believe that is what's going to make sense. That because sense, yeah. at the end of the day, like, like you said, it's, it's going to be able to track the students, the teachers, and the principals and uh, you know we can have a, a, a clear idea as to where the problems lie within the school within the classroom if it's a teacher if it's a student or probably if it's just the principal not putting 
enough focus on the school in itself. Um, I was looking at last night, I saw a, a video on social media with some kids in a school. They were about to fight and the security guard came in, grabbed one of the boys and pulling him outside and, and the boy stand up and, and was sizing up to fight the man and, and I wondering but, but what it is really going on here. This is the security guard, you know. We're looking at a, a, this kid probably wasn't older than 13, 14 years old. And here he is, standing up, pushing the guard, telling the guard if he continues to pull him, he's going to see what happens. I mean, th these are children, right? Really? We feel it. We're feeling the nation. And we're feeling the nation <clears throat> through this classroom to prison pipeline. We've created a system that leaves uh, the vast majority of the 20,000 children that do this SEA exam every year, it leaves them behind. You cannot run a nation where at the age of 10, 11, and 12 years old, you can destroy somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Before a child hits puberty, before a child understands the workings of their own body, before they understand life, and, and, and get a, a better understanding of things like money and, and the importance of a career. They have no clue of any of this. They're guided by people outside of them. A lot of times, you talk to people and they end up in university to become a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant and they had no idea what that was. They found themselves in a life track. I remember in St. Mary's College in Form 2, you had to pick your subjects of what you wanted to do there were limited spaces in the sciences so to get biology physics chemistry maths ad maths you had to excel in those subjects and i got myself in to do physics chemistry biology maths ad maths and i never wanted to do science and i never but i was but i was on a track and i was being led to a certain thing and and the point i'm trying to make is education instead of force feeding children should teach children how to grow into contributing conscious adults who are capable of making a decision you can't make a life decision for the rest of your life at the age of 10 correct correct you have people who end up in jail because their hustle failed because the school they ended up in failed them because an exam because they failed an exam mm -hmm. life in Trinidad and Tobago stops making sense at that point for a lot of children. The, for every parent that's on social media exuberant that their children got into the prestige school of choice, mm -hmm. there are, I would say, 1,999 who stay silent, who now have to wrestle with a failed education system outside of the prestige school system where the children go to school in a hostile and violent environment correct, correct. where the teachers are not present right. where the teachers who are present do not teach the curriculum to encourage the children to fail so they could sell their after school services ah boy you hit that nail nice for, but that but all of that and these children now wrestling with growing into young adults have to now become gang members they have to learn how to survive in a violent situation you can't go and tell mommy and daddy mm -hmm. because you'll end up in more trouble there is no leadership in the school not one of these principals vice principals are standing up on behalf of the children trapped in this failing education system the parent teachers association is vocal over the silliest of things. The Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association only seems to care about remuneration and worker and teachers as workers. So the vocation that was education is lost in Trinidad and Tobago. And then at the end of the year, you have a couple students who rise to the top and shine brightly. And when you interview them and you interview their families and you interview their teachers, you realize that it was a collaborative effort, mm -hmm. a proper school, proper teachers, a child that was set on fire to learn, um, 
parents that were committed to the child's well-being. I tell people all the time. That's like here, let just talk about yeah, the parents Absolutely. being committed to the child's well-being. No, go with that. Go with that because I'll right. come back to what I'm trying to say. And, go with and, that. And, and, and a major problem also where that is concerned, not just saying well done to the parents that, that is able to do that, but it's unfortunate that we have a, a very uh, broken home environment where most children are living with a single home environment. Is In most cases, it's the mother. Um, where the same mother has to hold on two and three jobs in order to pay the bills and make things more or less comfortable for the family unit. Now, a parent like that is going to be hard for them to put personal time into okay. their child. Let me interject here and hand it back to you, right? So that Trinidadians understand what the Progressive Empowerment Party advocates for as an education system, at least the principal first 10 years of education that our children get mandatory 5 to 50. Mm -hmm. that, that chunk of time in your life, in the development of a human being, is critical. The science tells you the first three years of a child's life, all it is doing is learning itself and its connection to the world. Mm -hmm. That's all it's doing. It's building its own concepts of reality. Right. And it's establishing neuron pathways in its mind based on things that it's exposed to. We will never have the mental capacity as an adult that we have as a three-year-old child. Simply put, you are born with all those neuron pathways firing. And you could teach babies five languages. Right. You could teach them multiples of musical instruments. And what that will do is that will cement the neuron pathways that will create, even if they don't use it now, that the next time they go to use it, they would have had a robust framework in their minds. It's like training in the gym. You, right. Every time you work out, you develop yourself a little more. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with your brain. But your brain, at the earliest stage of your life, what you do in the first three to five years of a child's life is critical to how much that child can learn. And, and when they tell you, you could tell somebody from... You could tell somebody the environment they came from by what they bring to the conversation True. when they talk to you, when they bring the national conversation. Anyway, the Progressive Empowerment Party advocates for community schools. We want to zone the schools similar to Finland. Finland's model and Finland's system of education is so far ahead of everybody else in the world that the next three are so far behind if you added them up this is their their results don't match finland and finland's model does not call for a separation of children by examination finland's model says a community of children going forward will learn together and will carry each other forward right now you have social management issues to deal with and you put that into the conversation just now we are come back to that right because that's critical. The behavior of children in school is indicative of what they learned in the home environment and the community environment. Mm -hmm. and, and we fail our communities in much the same way. And to put all of this on the table at the same time will confuse a lot of people. But we didn't get here as a nation by accident. This was deliberate failure on the path of a lot, on the part of a lot of people who set us off on this path and we are now here as a nation where we have completely failed and collapsed in communities and we will look for a bright spark and we say no you're wrong look this man making money or, or yeah. this one child and this one getting a, a football scholarship and, and nothing is ever absolute yeah. but the vast majority of people living in these communities are living desperate suffering lives and even though our natural trini disposition is to laugh it off and to find a way to excuse it the truth of the matter is, a nation this wealthy should never have produced this much poverty. Correct. We cannot explain this morning, Enterprise, Embarcadere, Bagatelle, um, Covine, La Puerta, Rich Plain, Abipujad, Scorpion, Waterhole, Kokori, Mova, Beatam, Lavantil, Silos. We can't explain those places. The most we could do is acknowledge that they are victims of a broken society driven by greed the show that was on this morning the pnm is ripping itself apart and i'm not going on a political path yet but the pnm is ripping itself apart because people 
who understand politics in this country is a means for people to get rich. Mm -hmm. That's what they see it as. They don't care about nothing. If you see a pavement building in your area, somebody getting rich off that. Yeah. It's not that they care that they want you to walk on a better pavement, but public works in this country and development is all tied to somebody pushing something where they could make some money and share it with a corrupt right. politician, yes. and that's how things get yes. done. We can't even have that conversation right now, but all of it, and that's the problem, all of it ties together to make this failed nation that we live in in Trinidad Tobago. Come back to education. We propose a 10-year school, a child enters from the age of five, whatever preschool that you do, and that's a whole, again, other conversation. Oh, yeah. They have a preschool <laughs> system that you can have a conversation about that teaches children how to play, how to interact with others, and how to develop their own um, mechanical skills. Skills that they, they're born with naturally. Right. And I, I've always said that. In the kindergarten phase, the, the training process should not be the teachers trying or whomever is teaching just shoving information down the children's throats. They must put them in an environment where they can determine what is this child's natural trait. Are they academic? Are they, they the correct? Yeah. Are, they, are they artistic? Are they uh, uh, physical in the sense where they work with their hands? The point is, is that every child is born with a natural, correct, yes. they yeah. are. And why is it we don't have a system that can identify that at that young tender age? No one says that you don't want your child to be a doctor or whatever, you know. But the point of the matter is, if you're able to determine what this child's natural aspiration or trait is from birth, you can put this child into that direction and they would thrive, they would soar forward and again, if they choose later on, if it's when they're in their teens or, or what have you, choose to go within sciences or into another field, obviously the doors would be open once again. The key element is open opportunity. Correct. Once it's there, Correct. then they can spread their wings into other fields and specialties. But the point of the matter is, is that from the kindergarten age, in my mind, I think that the, the system has to be re redeveloped where we're able to have something that we can, at the end of that tenure, if it's a one year or two year tenure for kindergarten period, uh, the teacher can give a certification as to what child's, what the child's uh, natural aspiration or natural ability or gift is. Absolutely agree. And, but you see, that comes back to the fact that the vast majority of our people are unsophisticated to the point where they don't know what they should want. Mm -hmm. They don't know that they should want that for their children. They don't know that they're entitled to want that for their children. They don't know that they should have a political conversation where I want better for my family and I want it to start with po politics that w is willing to discuss what you just discussed. Yeah. In the Soviet Union and China, when a baby is born, it's not just weighed, it's measured. All of the limbs and muscles and everything is measured and put into an algorithm that tells you this person at the baby stage mm. has a natural propensity if it is exposed to the environment to excel in gymnastics yeah. or sports or dance. You understand mm. what they do? Yeah so that you know and you see because it's all about making sure that people get exposed to where their natural advantages ah, lie. Ah, that's it. And what you just said about the kindergarten system, we, our people, are too unsophisticated to know that that is what we should have. And instead, we've settled for ministers of education awarding contracts to build rooms to function as a babysitting service. Nah, and that is correct. what preschool should be. Correct, correct. But we don't have a preschool curriculum, and we don't have a preschool objective. We want to provide babysitting mm -hmm. so that the people could go and work as labor in the camps, because that's what our corporate Trent Tobago is becoming. Yes. You function, you move item A to B, and every day, the more of those items you could move, and the more I can get out of you, and that's your salary. And a country that's wealthy, we need to stop. We need to stop. We don't need all of our people on this hustle. We don't need this mad train to nowhere that has so many people slamming into each other on a daily basis, not understanding what they themselves are, not even just the children, what they themselves are entitled to. If I had my way, boy, I would tell you this. 
knowing that we are spending or hemorrhaging over or almost 50% of what our budget is. So for example, if we have a 60, $60 billion budget, we are basically hemorrhaging almost $30 billion. Do you think we are able to raise minimum wage in corp if we're able to save that hemorrhaging and we have a high GDP, we're making money, now, don't you think that if we're able to raise the minimum wage, let's say $30 an hour, wouldn't that make people be a little more empowered? I, if you just, and I agree with you with the concept of where this is going, what you want to do is close the gap. So your minimum wage can be $2 an hour. Mm -hmm. If $2 could pay, if $2 an hour could pay a mortgage. Ah, if $2 right, an hour right. could buy gotcha, food. Gotcha. It's, not, it's not just the quantum, right. it's the gap. Right. And we need to keep watching the gap mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that gap needs to close. Right. Which we, would boil down to as well as the worth of our dollar. Absolutely. Yes. But, but, but the worth of our people. And we treat our people with disrespect. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people walking through this country thinking themselves independent and successful have no idea of all of the people behind them that make their lives possible right every single person in the entire food chain of everything that you own and everything you do to be able to get gas in your car to keep you mobile takes a lot of people mm -hmm. takes a lot of people working to make sure that that gas is convenient mm -hmm. to you so that you could pull up and pump gas we take it for granted, granted yeah. but those people need to also be raised those people also be, need to be given hope and opportunity that they can develop too. Mm -hmm. We must push from below all of our people to excel. Some people might prefer to reach to a place where they could afford to live and then they could pursue whatever mental or other pursuits they want to pursue. Right. Coming back to the education system, because I want to put this out whole and I guess we can pick it up on. The Progressive Empowerment Party advocates for us an education system for the first 10 years that primary to secondary system we propose that that be a 10-year system that there be no SEA exam and we would abolish the SEA exam that the schools be zoned because it is our fun, our underpinning ideology is that if we fix the communities we'll fix the country because a country is a collection of communities so if we get the family and the community functional at the family and the community level, mm -hmm. the country will fix itself. Yes. All of the ills that are a symptom of failing nation will fall apart if you fix that at the person level, at the people level, children yeah. and today, right? So let's say we create a school system zone, the children are going to school zone in the community in which they're growing. And they go to school in a, in a school that is a 10 year school, so you're not separating them at the age of 10, 11, and 12. The same children that they met at the age of five, they will grow until the age of 15 with them. You've just knit the community together, strong bonds. Yeah. Because, because your childhood friends are friends you take with you all through yeah. your life. You respect those friendships, even though you may have known this childhood friend for a year. And you, and you make another friend as an adult that you have for 10 years. But you still respect that childhood friend because they were a friend for you at that time when you were making foundation yeah, memories. Yeah. If you knit, just knitting the community together at that stage, you will reduce crime. People who know each other tend to not want to do each other wrong. We could start to look at things like, and the intangibles that we don't discuss, like integrity, character, morals, scruples, respect. I, I call all those words there, and the average person listening have to Google the meaning of those words. They can't tell the difference, the difference between them. We need to create a system where Parents and teachers could meet when a child comes into a school system at five and know each other and parents and teachers, they grow together while the child is growing in the system right. over the course of 10 years. Mm -hmm. In place of the SEA, we want to put a grade point average, which basically means you test your child against your child's performance or ability to perform. This is not between your child and every other child. We have to take a break. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back to it right at that point when we come back. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Jeff Lati. Of course, yes, we are getting ready for, you know, we have the Mother's Day promo going on here at the uh, M104.7 FM. And yes, Super Quality and More FM 1047 presents Name It For Long and Win Prizes for
the world this Mother's Day. Just name a song and artist. If you win, your name will go into the M104.7 Winners Vault. And on Friday, 11th May, we will open the vault and choose seven names from the winners from the winners list. Remember that to receive beautiful prizes. See the quality of M104.7 and name it for mom. Have been prizes for her this Mother's Day. Super Quality is the official sponsor for the Name It For Mom promotion. And of course, remember, if your name is already in the vault, you cannot win twice. Yes, we are going to that now. Keep it locked on. The M104.7 FM. Sense of sensibility. And of course, you know, Philip Alexander and his guests inside as well. Tuna Puna. You're invited. This Monday. It's about you and your future. The UNC's Monday Night Forum is at the Cora Road Basketball Court in El Dorado. And there we will continue to outline our vision to move Trinidad and Tobago forward. It's about making you safer. This is about you and your future. It's about fresh ideas and solid experience. The UNC Monday Night Forum is in Tuna Puna this Monday from 6 p.m. It's about moving from a minimum wage to a living wage. It's about training our young people in the skills they um, They were in office for five years. Monday night oh. Why didn't they talk about living wage? It's about fixing our healthcare system and getting free education back on track. Tuna Puna. Yeah. This is what we hear it. If you love your mom, and I'm sure you do, well, Super Quality and M104.7 FM gives you the chance to win something nice for her. Super Quality and M104.7 FM presents Name It For Mom. Inside the winners' vault, and on Friday, 11th May, we will open the vault and choose seven names from the winners' list and receive beautiful prizes. Now we we'll open the phone lines. Yes, right here on number one four point seven FM. It's your time to call. Inside right now, yes. Give us a call if you know the name of the artist and the name of the song. Give us a call right now. The super quality and then 104.7 FM. Name it for more promotion. 
and win prizes for her this Mother's Day. You know the numbers to call, you know the numbers to dial. Is the super cool yet? M104 by 7 FM. Mother's Day. Yes, Mother's Day from all right here. Name it for Mama. Give us a call right now and get your name inside of Dennis Walls. Yes, 6289596331. Give us a call right now. Give us the name of the artist and the name of the song. Hello, good morning to you. Do you know the name of the song? Could you get them to just mm -hmm. sing them? Sing yes, that's the first part. Also, could you tell the people? Mm, you seem to know your music well. Cut it in the common, yes, congratulations to you. Your, your name will now, yes, of course, your right? name will now go into the Winner's Vault, the M104.7 FM Winner's Vault, and on Friday, 11th May, you will open the vault and choose seven names from the winner's list, and let's hope that your name is one of the names. Okay? So what's your name? Okay, but fine, how about Mark? Azaria. Mm-hmm. What's his name? M-A-H-E-E-L. Well, congratulations. It was cream or something now, uh, excitement. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks for participating inside the more FM and super quality. Name it for mom promotion. I don't know. I don't know. Now talking to our viewers on social media. Was a nice break. Um, 104.7, of course, they have to pay the bills, of course. Yeah, <laughs> so we had just gotten into discussing the PEP's um, education policy, which is a 10 year, 10 year system. You get in at the age of five, and over the course of the 10 years in the zone school, there's no SEA, the child is given a GPA, and that grade point average is a means to test the aptitude and the performance of the child. Now, we said at the beginning that there are certain, that you need to keep it as open as possible so children to find their natural predisposition. But we can't escape the fact that these children are also locked into a social system where there are certain things that you need to know. Right. I don't think everybody needs to buy a geometry pan, except people who are going to actually do geometry. Makes sense, exactly. You know, I think that we've, we, we, we do that to the children we, and the rest of us we grow up and we make memes and we laugh about it but it's just a system that's badly planned the grade point average system tells you the parent and the child's teacher this year how your child did in relation to last year so if we set a national target based on the curriculum of a grade point average a 4.0 you're just throwing a number out here, right. right? So the leadership of the education system sets 
a national target of 4.0. 4. Point, above 4.0 requires that you give these children increased opportunity. Right. They clearly have high aptitude. And we have to accept that not all, not, not there could never be a one size fit all. Right. But we should try to make sure that the basic skills needed to <coughs> advance yourself in life, that foundation, that all our children get that. The United Nations Children's um, thing, that we are signatory to, rights of a child, that we are signatories to, it says that all children are entitled to a proper functional education. Because at the age of 15, while you're still a child, you have more knowledge than the age of 10. Right. And you've been through a school system. You can make certain decisions then mm -hmm. for yourself, guided by guidance counselors, by family, by community. You could, you could find yourself on a track that I lean towards sport, I lean towards trades, I lean towards education, I lean towards science art, I lean toward, you, you could find what children's natural predisposition or propensity is uh, and guide them along that way. But we're talking about the basic foundation knowledge. That 4.0 as a target means that you would like every child who does an exam and the examination is not to be applied by the same teachers who teach the children. But at the end of the term, examination administrators come to the school and administer a national exam, end of term exam. And this end of term exam serves one major purpose. And that is to tell you, it's like a map, is to tell you where your child is in relation to that 4.0. You see what I'm saying, right? That we have as a target, we would like everybody to come as close to that 4.0 because you can graduate from that position to other choices in life. Right. But you need this as basic life skills and life knowledge. In a situation like that, your child did bad last year, did good this year, or improves, you know that whatever you and the teachers and whatever else you're doing is helping with the system. But more importantly, unlike the system we have now, this grade point average can also tell you if the teacher is failing. It could also tell you if the school itself is failing. It could tell you if the community is having problems. And it could bring you down, it could identify the lowest performers in the school system so that we could apply whatever relief measures might be necessary to raise them right. as well as it could identify children whose life ends up in turmoil it'll be indicated by a drop in their performance mm -hmm. a child whose life circumstances parents get divorced or some other negative situation is introduced into their lives will reflect in their ability generally to perform at that level and you'd be able to see and to intervene while it is still early in right. the situation because three terms are here. So you have, as a nation, three opportunities to assess where this child is in its life and in relation to where it should be and in relation to everything else. Sarah Nabi, our one of our deputy political leaders, you had on your show yeah. last night, she is also the head of the PEP social arm. In point 14, she raised an issue that stuck with me since. And I, and, and, I, and I have to admit, I wasn't thinking of it from this point of view, but from a management point of view, and that's what government is. Government is supposed to manage all of the resources and all of the assets of the country, mm -hmm. including the people. From the, child, from the moment a child is born and a birth certificate is created, Society has to account for this child. Right. You must know that this child is in a school and is reporting for school, and then it becomes the, the function of the education system to mold, together with the family and the community, of course, but to mold the minds 
and the capacity of this child to excel in life, mm -hmm. to live up to its full potential, to maximize its opportunities. And, and, and Sarah spoke in that meeting in Point Fortin about a child in Trinidad and Tobago that was sold into slavery in Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. <laughs> now, she was sold into slavery and there was no way in the system to say, when this child is born, I'm expecting her at five years of age in the education system. Yeah. So unless a death certificate interrupts right. her child. <laughs> you know that there's this child in existence. And the Ministry of Education should get a heads up yeah. that a child is born, that a new citizen of Trinidad and Tobago is here, yeah. and that in five years, you will have responsibility for him or her. Mm -hmm. So when that time comes, because it allows for the Ministry of Education to plan, that I know we have a bit of a boom and this year, up above the normal 20,000, we're going to have 22,000 children. Because, because the Ministry of Legal Affairs, or whoever's the registrar of births and deaths, it should be protocol that you copy the Ministry of Education on births and death certificates. Yeah. So it will create in their system a red, yellow, green. This is somebody who is in the red state right now. That means they're not in my system. Mm -hmm. In the yellow state, they're getting ready to come into my system. And in the green state, they yeah, should yeah, be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should be here. Yeah. So in between yellow and green, I don't get this child. Somebody raises an alarm. Mm -hmm. Sarah said that outside of the family and the community, wherever that failed, the education system failed also because nobody knew that this child was missing. And we go back to the social issues that we're dealing with on a national level. If you put a system in place like this that manages our people, mm -hmm. you give our children's children a right to respect, to development, to security of the person. Because let's face it, we hear of the most vile occurrences that take place in the country, and adults don't know who to turn to for redress, much less children. Well, they're in a much worse state. I mean, they feel uh, unemployed. Of course, because look, I do uh, uh, on a yearly basis, I do uh, some of the children's homes and stuff, and it's amazing to see some of these kids. I mean, how can. I mean, granted, there are situations where the children end up there by force. It, it was not any choice of theirs, obviously. Um, but at the end of the day, they, they are not. These homes are not getting the proper funding that they need help these children to make these children really productive uh, uh, members of society um, it almost comes as if you know they, they, they're in a jail I, in, as because, far as I look at it because again it comes down to the standards that we set for ourselves and the, and the internationally accepted term and I agree from parents to school teachers to everybody who have any interaction or responsibility for a child the correct term is caregiver mm -hmm. A child could only be somebody who is who is in need of care. I think we have to take a break. All right, Chess is interrupting us for uh, an, an advertisement break. Now we'll be right back. Trinity Lighting ETC Limited, the only place for light bulbs, parts, and accessories. For 123 Western New York St. James, Trinity has the widest range of light bulbs, replacement parts for chandeliers, ceiling fans, yes. and other light fixtures. We use special orders for hard to find light bulbs and have yes. one end specials. Get four LED bulbs for one hundred dollars. So don't go yes. your round. Call now six two eight eight three seven three fax six two two six nine three five. Email Trinity ETC small, at small yeah, bulbs here. Website yeah, Trinity ETC dot com. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trinity Lighting ETC one seven eight seven one. Small bulbs here. Boulevard Aventura, Florida. Telephone there one. Zero five nine three two zero seven two seven. Like us on Facebook, Trinity Lighting ETC. Look at Google. Your one stop shop. One sec. That's not your phone. Remember, this generation prefers emojis and hashtags, but they still need to protect their eyes from blue light around them. Hashtag Save Eyes. Come to the Valley Optical and be lit. Hashtag GT with complete eyewear starting from twelve hundred eight dollars. Hashtag Slay All Day. See in store, online, or call eight hundred twenty twenty for more info. Value Optical, caring for your eyes. 
It's about you and your future. The UNC's Monday Night Forum is at the Coral Road Basketball Court in El Dorado, and they will continue to apply our vision to move Trinidad and Tobago forward. It's about making you see that. This is about you and your future. It's about fresh ideas and solid experience. The UNC Monday Night Forum is in Tunapuna this Monday from 6 p.m. It's about moving from Minnesota to It's about training our young people in the skills they need. This Monday night, the UNC's Monday Night Forum is at the Cora Road Basketball Court in El Dorado. It's about fixing our healthcare system and getting free education back on track. Tunapuna, you're invited. Come on and join this summer. So, <laughs> the <laughs> the the so, so for the one the fashion meets fashion. It's not the one the one the one the one the this is not the forward one, eh? This is not the forward one. It's serious business. <laughs> Chai, so much more. Disclaimer and then told. Forget the disclaimer, man. But you know, but you know, once you're looking at this place. The night before Mother's Day, Black Bear Boogie Sports the perfect gift for mom. You also do not left for block news, right? Back in back. 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 So all we do at the top of the hour is a time check. No, it's up to the hour. Top of the hour. Four hours. 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 Courtesy 104.7, the official station for the Bookies Black, powered by High Level Audio. Disclaimer: More FM Limited, its owners and associates accepts statements made by the talk show hosts or their guests. More FM Limited does not endorse any of the information provided during this commercially booked segment as the truth that you have to judge for yourself. We, however, reserve the right to question statements made. But in this time of misinformation, government-controlled media and corruption, it is sometimes hard to get the truth. But we must try. It is not our intention to discriminate or annoy anyone. We believe it is our constitutional right to free speech, to voice our opinion, and our duty to the population and country to expose the truth. More FM Limited takes no responsibility for the opinions of others. Yeah? Yeah. We're back. <laughs> Talking about the GPA, the purpose of the GPA, a grade point average, a 4.0 as a national target. At the end of each exam cycle, you would have a situation where all of the children would get results as they would get a GPA. They would get their, how much they did in relation to the 4.0. Right. There are 20 children in the class. You then have an average performance of the class based on all of the children, you add all 20 together and you divide it by 20 and you'll get a number. So let's say that you set also as the Ministry of Education managing the system that we want all of our children to hit 4.0, that classes have a range between 3.6 and 4.0 as an average to perform, anything under 3.6 raises a flag, anything under 3.4 raises an alarm. When you raise a flag, the Ministry of Education writes the principal to account for the performance of any class below 3.6. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. 
So the principal now has to intervene in his or her school. Right. All of the classes did above 3.6. This one class did less than 3.6. So the principal has to go to the teacher and find out. Now, the principal, in responding to the Ministry of Education, could say, this particular teacher has been performing at a very high level. His or her class has been doing between 3.7 and 3.8 over the last four or five years. So I know that the teacher's performance can't be the issue here because this teacher has been performing mm -hmm. highly. But we're going to investigate it. So you go and you interview the teacher and you interview the students. And you look at all the students, their track record over their history, if they're in the system already. Right. Or you contrast and compare if it is very young children, this teacher's class with all the other classes to establish a national average. Mm -hmm. And also, you look to see who are the lowest performers. If the entire class underperformed, the teacher has to explain what went on this year. That this entire class contrasted against every other class at this standard, you underperformed. Why? Because if all the children do badly, the teacher has questions to answer. Right. If, on an average, most of the children hit the national average or close between that 3.6 and 4, but a couple of children fell far below and dragged the classroom average down, you then know that you have these children to deal with. Now, you compare their past performance to see if this is a track that they're on, or if they were doing better and this is a dip, so then you could then interview the parents. You could call the caregivers in. You right. could say, we're having a meeting with the teacher, the principal, the parents, or the principal caregiver of this child. And you want to ask, what is going on in this child's life that has caused their education track to derail? Because he or she has been consistent, average, and now they've dipped. And you'd be able to find out, well, the parents lost their job, or one of the parents died, or there's a divorce. divorce yeah. Or even if the child has actually, the child itself has been led astray, getting involved in drugs and gangs. All of this then creates a new chapter in this child's life, social development. Social development now has to get involved in this child's life to help right-size the child. And we're using the performance of the next three months. We want to see an improvement and an indicator, an indication that circumstances have been adequately addressed. And it's again being reflected in the performance of the child taking a positive upswing. If it continues negatively, there has to be intervention. And intervention could could include things like counseling for parents, counseling for the child, removing the child from the system altogether and putting the child in a foster home if it is found that the home environment is what's causing the problem. Right. Because at the end of the day, we have to be serious with our children. Frederick Douglass said, it is better, it is far easier to raise functional children than it is to fix broken adults. If we do not take the molding and educating of our children seriously, then we will have to take the interdicting and prosecuting of them as adults mm -hmm. when they run afoul of the law. We're passing on a bad relay. We have a responsibility as a nation to make sure that what we send forward into society are conscious, functional, law-abiding citizens who understand how a society works and their role in the society. And that is where it brings us to the top of the hour. When we come back right after these ads, we're going to get more into that, but we are discussing the issue of education in Trinidad today. See you soon. <laughs> Yeah. We have four hours. 
This one? Well, After this? Yeah. I could I could do a call, the redial. Yeah. I'll read at um you left it in. I'll give you a little place, Steve. I'll give you a little place. Right? You don't just sit there and then play the other. It is the position of the Progressive Empowerment Party that the SCA exam borders on child abuse. It is the position of the Progressive Empowerment Party that no government to date has taken the advice that has been given to this nation for over 30 years that a common entrant in an SCA exam is a failed system designed to segregate and separate children unfairly and that it needs to be abolished post haste. A progressive empowerment party government, party government, duly elected to office, would abolish the SEA, would make all schools zoned schools, would make all schools 10-year functional schools, complete with guidance counselors and psychological testing um, metrics, to keep all our to give all of our children the opportunity to advance. We propose a grade point average as a means test as to the performance of children and their social circumstances, among other things, that affect the performance of children. The SCA is tomorrow, Tony. Totally. Mm. Yes. I actually plan to um, go down and do some interviews if I can. Um, 
with the permission of parents, of course, uh, before and after the SEA. And this is actually for the 411 Trinidad and Tobago. Check it out on social media, on YouTube, as well as PEP's uh, uh, Facebook page. Uh, it's DE411. Check it out, most definitely. Last night's episode was brilliant. I must say, I, I enjoy what you're doing. It's a lighter, spoofier side of the PEP, and yes. I enjoy watching it. You will never get me on that show. You will never. I'm saying it, trying to be go, Anthony don't, the Fool. Don't study that. You will don't, don't study never. I he will, will. In fact, he is going to be the last guest for this season. I will sponsor Kim Cole a new show <laughs> and go back on her show. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I take the mic. Trinidad, he is going to be on the show, so definitely. He's going to be the last guest for this season. This season uh, is going to be... Uh, I'm not eating up at all. He's going to be ready. Sarah uh, Nabi tell me. Sarah Nabi tell me that she had to fast. And drink milk all day. You're killing people with that pepper. No, brother. Anyway, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm coming. You're the whole middle. We hold it in. Don't the worry. PEP has solutions to these problems. It is unfair that parents have been panicking, stressed over this exam because parents have to deal with the fallout if the child doesn't do well. Yeah. yeah. You cannot have a system. Yeah, bring Richard Blaze in. Um, one of our co-national security advisors, Richard Blaze, he is on the line with us now. Um, I don't know how, how we're going to hear him. I don't have a headphone. Yeah, yeah the point to the speaker. Hello? Richard Blaze. Richard, you hearing me? I'm hearing you now. Okay, so because we have to alternate between my speaking and your speaking, I'm going to ask you just a couple of questions. I'm here with Tony. Tony, you want to say? Hey, uh, Richard, what's going on, brother? Go ahead. Richard, you're hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Okay, so Tony just said hi. Um, we want to know, as a parent, what has it been like preparing for this abusive SEA exam tomorrow? It's, it's, it's been unsettling, very extremely traumatic um, for the children. Um, it's, it's even worse on the parents. Um, my wife, who's a teacher, was very involved in this preparation. Um, the pressure that is applied to them, and, and no real thought of the teachers, it's just they have to follow the mandate of the ministry. The workload has been tremendous. Um, and it, it, it's just it's just so unnecessary because regardless of how you try to to brand it to paint it or color it, this exam is interpreted by the children as the be all and end all. And if they're not successful, it's the end of their life. I mean, I, I don't care. I mean, they tried. The school has tried to bring it across as you know, you just do your best, and that's all. Of us. We have reiterated that. So um, our son to the entire exercise, but I mean, it's it just like a dysfunctional system scenario. Tony. Mm. Yes, uh, I, I, I agree with you uh, there, Richard. Uh, because even with my son, uh, it was a, a, a really, really critical time for him. And uh, he did not even get to the school that he actually wanted to go. Um, and I, I saw what effect it had because most of his friends from, uh, from that particular class had actually gone to the school that he was uh, trying to aim for. Uh, but again, you know, even, even though he did well, his choice was not one that he had gotten and again if uh, if we had the system where uh, the gpa was concerned and, and we we actually zoned the schools being a 10-year school like philip said have the children growing together and uh, you know let their tenure be there with greater stability as well as building the the, the, the bonds and friendships that they need to you know what i mean if you don't get your first choice you, you, you either feel like a failure or you feel as though you have not, you have not um, accomplished anything or, or satisfied the, um, what you set out to do because you're separated and unless you fall for one of the, the, these prestige schools um, or school of choice, you, you, you're groomed, the sister, the sister grooms you, have groomed you to, to feel that, that, that you have failed. 
I don't know why year after year, decade after decade, these regimes, past and present, continue to subject um, parents and, and, and the country's children. And, and but I mean, the, the whole system is just designed to just break you down and really struggle through. I mean, just now, we're just being now on our way home from a mass that was held for the children. Several schools are doing that today. And it was a very emotional um, experience for a lot of the parents, for a lot of the children, a lot of parents today sob, you know, because it's just such a release, a release of, of, of emotion and, and stress for the, for the thing, the more fortunate for us. I mean, my son is very, he's been well prepared, he's very relaxed, you know, and, and we keep reiterating this thing. Just do your best. And he has done when he's come along and, and you know, he's ready. But he's one of, of, of 18,000. You know? Richard, I, I need to say this to you because the, the system in the studio here, because we have to turn off mics to, to listen to you on the speaker and then turn them back on. We're not having the kind of conversation we really need to have. But that contribution you just made is stark. It is, it is literally frightening to think that we continue to promote an unequal system that tries to fit 20,000 students into 1,000 places, <coughs> leaving 19,000 children behind. Anyway, I want to tell you, thank you, Richard. And also, Felicia Holler, I think she's trying to contact you to be on Frontline tomorrow with regards to the SEA and the experience. Um, I think you should contact her. Thanks a lot for, for um, taking our call, though. And we're back. It's and, man. No, but it is, it is ridiculous, and it encourages corruption. Parents and teachers and principals, the prestige schools, the twenty percent first pick mm -hmm. that have nothing to do with performance. So you create an education system where children have to fight each other, and then you corrupt that system, and you give some children an unequal advantage. It is insanity on steroids, and the fact that the PNM government and the UNC government, both of whom keep beating their chest about building schools, have not realized as yet that they have broken this society and created a, a culture of high performers and never do wells at the age of 10 and 11. If a child is told at 11 that your life is over, what do you think they will do? Yeah, well, I go in on the corner and get an if they play. Is that a self-fulfilling self <laughs> prophecy? You know. When you hear the, the, the man with the most amount of patterns in history was Thomas Edison. Mm -hmm. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, the phonograph, the movie, or, or we watch movies. He invented all of that. He had the most patterns in history. Thomas Edison's mother was summoned to school when he was a small child and told to take him out of school. And yes. she went home with him and had to tell him as a young boy, Thomas, you can't go to school anymore. And he asked, why? Why, Mama? Why? And she said that the principal of the school said that you are too bright that there is nothing left for them to teach you and that they can't keep up with you and that it is an injustice to you to keep having you come to a school every day that you are too bright for. And he went on to excel at life at, at a level that few have. And write his name into history. And when his mother died, he found a letter written to her by the school principal that said this child is below average will never succeed and we cannot teach him anymore so big Jew. <laughs> you give me a good story yeah, i like that she like that. she was left with nothing but faith and to tell this child in her words you are going to succeed in life you just have to know that you're entitled to succeed at life. Tomorrow, 
children are going to be exposed to child abuse state-sponsored child abuse they're going to be corralled into rooms and given an exam that is the peak of at least two years of stress and at the end of this exercise putting their best foot forward you could still tell them unfortunately your best wasn't good enough yeah. Yeah. when all we need to do is make every school in this country a prestige school correct correct make every school a prestige school correct and it, i mean it's not rocket science we have elected to government dysfunctional mismanagers who have no vision for the people who don't care ah you sit there you hit the nail on the head no vision but no you vision. but you can't continue to elect to office prime ministers who have no idea of how education is supposed to work no and I, I thought we were hiring uh, uh kings and queens no they're regurgitators themselves kamla pasad bisesa and keith rowley are school builders mm. but they are not educators and when you are the prime minister you have to understand every trade every profession every role in society you have to be a grand thinker you have to have a vision for the people this morning one of Trinidad's most celebrated martial artists, Brian Chimliam, told me, he said, you have no idea the support your party has. People feel relief. A sense of hope is surging in Trinidad and Tobago that there are people who are willing to deal with issues. Richard Blaze calling in here. He is co-national security advisor. The work that they're doing while he is, while he is getting his child ready for school, Talk to Richard Blaze and Dilbert Braffitt about the ideas to fix this country mm -hmm. from a security level and see how it dovetails with social development and education. Everything is connected. I met with Michael Phillips yesterday. Michael Phillips is one of the most, I want to say, artistic people you will ever talk to when it comes to sport. Mm -hmm. How I feel about politics, Michael Phillips feels about sport. And, and to sit with Michael Phillips, Michael Phillips resigned from the PNM as head of sport TT. And he resigned and he had Daryl Smith his resignation. He said, listen, this is not what I signed up for. Daryl Smith has, I mean, Michael Phillips has created international, internationally recognized sporting events on his own, without government. Um, cycling on the Avenue is now there are, there are cyclists globally that have added this this um, cycling spectacular to their annual tests of themselves. They want to go and, and test themselves against, and the best and the best coming every year and getting better. The same Michael Phillips, four o'clock in the morning for the people in Dago Martin, he and a team just closed the highway, a section of the highway, mm. so that by six o'clock in the morning and for about four hours on a Sunday morning, I think it's either Saturday or Sunday morning, the top of the highway, parents and children could come out and use the highway with their bicycles, families, and right. riding along. And, right. riding. and he owns bikes, bikes. And, and talking to him yesterday, and his vision for sport, and I, and I, and I talk about Atto Bolan, and I talk about men like Shaka Hislop, these people, if you bring Atto Bolan and Shaka Hislop into Chirani, he said, just talk to us about sport. Shaka who lives in a world now, and if Shaka was involved in sport in Trinidad Tobago, ESPN would be involved in sport in Trinidad Tobago. Shaka speaks to the world. Atto speaks to the world on NBC. Atto trains athletes that are functioning at the highest level. We have Terry Fennett here, who should be leading our should be leading leading our footballers and our football camps he has the best performing football camp probably in the region some of you will know him from his show on flow he played terry fennick played first string football in the premier league we have access to these people and we don't use them what are we using them for and you use the michelin <laughs> man daryl smith who couldn't run up a staircase <laughs> as the minister of sport and now you replace him yeah, look at who's with, replace him with roma girl and avex <laughs> and avex because there are people who are listening to this this morning oh, who don't understand that what is underpinning this dysfunction and the mismanagement of this country is their vote mm -hmm. they are empowering foolishness correct 
The entire PNM should have go to Bali's house and tell Keith Rowley, what foolishness you're telling us about Chan Fakujo as Minister of Sport? When education fails to deliver, sport picks up some of these children. You hear Dwight York's story. Dwight York coach said Dwight York in Tobago used to play football barefoot because Dwight York couldn't afford a football boots. Hmm. Hmm. Dwight York for a while was the most expensive footballer in the world. Aston Villa and West Ham and Manchester United. I mean, they courted this man like a prince. Where is Dwight York? In the national conversation on football. Understand what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. We are electing into office people who fail forward miserably and we defend it foolishly. That is the kicker right there. We're defending it. We are defending it. Look, we covered a story there on, in the parliament last Friday where the PNM and UNC was protesting with uh, Sinanan. You thief more. You thief more. That's what they tell everyone. Unreal, you know, man. Unreal. The country falling apart. But you are standing for UNC and the other side standing for PNM and arguing in front of the parliament as to who thief. Because that is, and that is what the media is foreseeing the people, that foolishness. Those kind of stunts will make news. But you're not getting anybody talking about the fact that this morning, the Commissioner of Police and the Director of Public mm -hmm. Prosecutions are failing the mm -hmm. nation by refusing to initiate an investigation into how Keith Rowley came to spend $3 million on Mexico. Aye, aye, aye. Because Talk about Keith that. Rowley didn't have the authority to spend that money. Talk and about Maxi Coffey is not entitled yet. Yeah. The Speaker of the House of Representatives has brought the House of Representatives, the Parliament, into odium. She has approved serial leaves of absence for Maxi Coffey without so much as a fit for life, fit for work certificate, certificate yeah, yeah, or a sick yeah. leave from his doctor. But what you're saying there, you telling him Israel people, you no, cussing right listen now. To me now man. Listen to me now. Because nobody wants to hear this. Listen to me now. <coughs> La Hoqueta Talparo is one of 41. But no representation. But La Hoqueta Talparo has no representation. Correct. And it is contempt for every single citizen of this country that you tell them that parliament is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. That is a stunt, is a circus, a theater. Because if we could tell you that we call it the House of Representatives, but your representative don't have to be there, then what's the point? Exactly. Where's the governance? Where's the leadership in this country? When people tell you at the highest level, and, and you know what's going to you know what's going to frustrate the PNM and the UNC as we get closer to election? Not the recycled politicians, you know. But the excellent performers in this country who have been carrying this nation despite, not because of good governance, but despite 56 years of bad governance. But for a few people, that is all that separates us as a country from the darkness. You know, Trinidad would have eaten itself already. You know? yeah. We would have descended into racial strife and racial war had people not calmed the country down and said, look, let's do this, let's do that. Not elected people, you know. The progressive and power one party, I tell people this, they say, well, that is progressive thinking. We have this idea for something called the activist council. You don't like me and I don't like you, but if you are an activist and you're seeking the best interest of this country, animal rights, human rights, and the environment, the disabled, the poor, the blind, women, men, children, all of this, if you are an activist for anything in this country, you don't be registered with nobody. But you are an activist and your track record says that you are working for a better Trinidad and in this part of Trinidad and We will convene all of you once a month. Guide us. Correct. Guide us. Yes. Government must listen to the people. Mm -hmm. And if government is not listening to the lowest, the smallest, the underrepresented, the dispossessed, and the people who don't have, where are we going? I have raised and led a pushback against Massey for this foolish plastic bag stunt only because yeah. and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to explain to people who are otherwise educated and sensible people it is not that we are against Massey doing stuff for the environment but don't do a stunt because it undervalues environmental care and concern and that is something that we have to pay attention to yeah. the Progressive Empowerment Party advocates a 25 cent tax on every plastic bottle Every plastic bottle manufactured or imported into this country, every single one of them must get a 25 cent tax at the manufacture or the import stage. So that if somebody discards it and decides to road, somebody else can pick it up and collect the 25 cents. Somebody else yeah, in that direction. Yeah, 
So 100 bottles is 25 dollars. Correct. But look at what used to go on back in the day when they we used to do the beer bottles. Correct. You could not find a beer bottle on the road. That was one piece exactly. of, of item you weren't finding on the road. So you imagine you create this tax on these plastic bottles and you tell the people who are unemployable or even the children, the boy scouts, the girl scouts, you want to raise money for yeah, your camp, yeah. your school, the class. Let's do a class drive where every class in the country aims to pick up 10,000 bottles. You raise money for your classroom. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's teaching children and teaching us as a nation care and concern and respect for our environment and also no more stunts but that 25 cents a young a, a, an entrepreneur who is unemployable can't access finance he can't do anything else for himself all of a sudden he has an opportunity that he could decide he could build a business he could hire people to work with him and all they're doing is collecting bottles all day and taking it because these bottles besides the fact that it is drilling money down to the lowest rungs of society where you get your 25 cents on each bottle we're going to employ massive shredders to reduce this plastic to pellets, well, to, to pellets and, to, and to strips. Mm -hmm. And these strips of plastic, you wouldn't believe, this same Blue Waters plastic bottle, if you reduce this to strips of plastic, small strips of plastic, and combine it with our pitch, our natural pitch, road. pitch yeah, yeah, forget yeah, the road, yeah, yeah. every roof that you apply that to, mm -hmm. you've just added about 20 years of life to the roof. You've waterproofed it. You've protected it from the elements. You've deadened sound. You've made it soundproof. There's so many advantages. Mm -hmm. And that is a business and industry that could employ thousands of people because not everybody could afford to change a roof. Right. A roof is an right. expensive thing. True. Right? True. So we, we, we're just talking about these things and looking at government with vision and leadership. I'm listening to an ad and I'm hearing a political party talking about fresh ideas and experience. I want you to defend your track record. Don't tell me about your fresh ideas now. Somebody say, well, dog food is new and improved. Who tested it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How you know it improved? It's true. <laughs> Somebody tasted it. These, these organizations, they just sell foolishness to their followers and song bites and they listen and they take in that nonsense and they tell one to another that if we support Jim or we support Mary, we will get this now. But Jim or Mary didn't deliver when they were in office before. So what foolishness are you telling me? We taking a break? Just has some ads to read for us. Definitely, definitely. Maybe does. One of the most hearty foods at Ashley's Bed and Bath and specials are on four pool pool two liter for $25. Three Viva water for twenty-five dollars. A three pack of leg and thigh for thirty dollars. Two rainbow nine kilogram rice for one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Rainbow ten pound sugar forty dollars. Three one and liter milk for thirty dollars. A three full head cases for one hundred and fifty dollars. Magnum affordable power speakers one thousand four hundred and fifty dollars. A box of twenty dollars daily roasting special. Hot box barbecue special, twenty-five dollars and thirty-five dollars. Two white oak at seven hundred and fifty and for one hundred and seventy dollars. Five cases and up yeah, bear specials. Five cases and up bear specials. You can check it out as well. Two pack of mixed parts for twenty-five dollars. And those are just some of the specials happening at Hearty Food and Ashley's in Arima. And of course, Lotto Plus, the players assemble and get ready for Winfinity Wednesday. The Lotto Plus jackpot is invading TNT with an estimated $2.1 million. Choose your six mighty numbers and prepare for the epic battle to win a marvelous $2.1 million. Plus, if you match five numbers, you can win $50,000. The winnings will be heroic. Get your tickets for Wednesday's $2.1 million Lotto Plus jackpot. Winners always play Lotto Plus. <laughs> Tuna Puna. You're invited. This Monday. It's about you and your future. The UNC's Monday Night Forum is at the Cora Road Basketball Court in El Dorado. And there we will continue to outline our vision to move Trinidad and Tobago forward. It's about making you safer. This is about you and your future. If I read an 
And we're back. And um, Tony. Yes, man. Chess. Inside, inside. Right. <laughs> There's a team, people, yes, that, that's bringing this conversation today. But Chess, you're, you're sitting down there and you're, and you're listening to what we're discussing today. And, and I really want to ask you, give me a minute of your time now. Like you're you're busy take, behind Chaz? there, but give us some your input now. What you think? You, you think we as a nation... I ask you a straight up question. If you don't want to get too much into it, you can give me a yes or no. You think we as a nation have the ability to see past the foolishness and vote ourselves a better nation? I think so. Yes. You think that it is possible for people to wake up and realize the nonsense of mismanagement of, of racist tribal government and how badly it has left us all collectively that we could change from it and vote ourselves a better country? Of course. Thanks for that, Chess. And that's where we need to get people. And I tell you, that's what's going to break the PNM and the UNC's heart. Eh? When you look at the threads, every now and then, I see some diehard PNM and UNC that have to come and say, I don't normally agree with Philip, eh? but I have to agree with him on this. You see, when the PNM and the UNC sees that, what they're seeing is that their followers are waking up to the truth mm -hmm. that leadership is supposed to make their lives better. All right. Correct, 50 plus years, and we still dealing with, with, with flooding. And, and, and I mean, come on, man. We are not stupid uh, 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 citizens of this country, but yet we insist that we want to be blonde and, and, and not be aware of what is really going on in, in on our land, in our accord, in our name. Because no one in parliament got up one day and put on a suit and decided to go into the parliament. They were placed there by the people, and at the end of the day, no matter how much a man talk, you still have to take initiative for yourself as a citizen, get involved, get there in front of them, ask them the questions that is necessary. Put them on the spot. That's right. That's right. Tony, the well-being of each and every citizen is the function, purpose, and reason yes. for government. That's correct. Correct. Tony, when I go down today, or tomorrow to Riverside Plaza to do a live video to show Trinidadians what some of their brothers and sisters endure on a daily basis. I mean, not just poverty. Eh? This is beyond poverty. This is this is torture. This is where these people living in, in the car park. Yeah. No, well, listen. It's ridiculous to the point of this. In the car park is the homeless who still getting some attention. There are people who live below the car park hmm. who are so out of the system that they are literally just left there to die. That, that. That, that they are left there to die. Some of them have AIDS, some have cancer, some have other life-threatening illnesses that they have no access to any any sort of treatment, mm -hmm. no doctor, no medical, rainfall, sun hot, we don't care. Government fails every time one of those people have to endure a day like that. And it is so easy for us to blame each other, mm -hmm. to attack each other. Tony, I do in this politics thing a while now, and I have been I've been raising questions in the public space that the PNM and the UNC cannot defend and they cannot answer. So they send their agents to attack me, fight me, cuss me, say the worst things about me, but they wouldn't address this issue. Kamala Prasad Bissessa's ad is saying a better nation. The UNC is putting out a competition with the PNM to see, let's see who built more police stations. But Manning, Kamala, 
Pandey Rowley all leave the police service in a mess. They all say that our police service is corrupt, is mismanaged, is rogue, and because the police service is like that, we can't tackle crime. But they have not fixed the police service, and that's their responsibility. Exactly. Exactly. I watched Basileo Pandey in a conversation on social media say, it's not me, it was Nipdeck who built the airport. Miss me with that, Basileo Pandey. You are the prime minister. Oh, that's right. You dictate the pace. Nipdeck answers to you. But that's the facade, that's the show they want to give the population. So that's them pacifying the population. Put that down your throat as ice cream. Talk to Richard Blaze, talk to Bill Bradford, bring Bill Bratton to this country. Let me tell you something. If we have to pay Bill Bratton $50 million, the FBI, bring them here and tell them. Because they say internal affairs, New York City Police Department says, we have 65,000 police officers. In New York City, we have 65,000 police officers, and our murder rate this year was 291. Yours is 500. Imagine that. You're doing something wrong. Imagine they have 8 million people. people. We have one. one. <laughs> New York City Internal Affairs says six months, they will right size the Trinidad and Tobago police service. Right size, flush it of the rogue and the corrupt. You say we will, beat, we will beat the bushes, and the rats will run. And they know how to do this. Mm -hmm. I have been told by a commissioner. Somebody high up in the commissioner's office in New York City. Police officers in New York City broke the mafia. And the mafia had corrupted the police service. That's true. When you watch all those shows, The Godfather and all this foolishness, it's New York City they was doing it mm -hmm. in. New York City had become the murder capital of the world. Spider-Man and Superman and Gotham and all Batman, all this foolishness. It's New York City they're talking about. Yeah. New York City was bad. And Giuliani, who broke the mafia, and his concept and his commissioners and the people who did the job, they tell you that police officers in New York City don't afraid mafia henchmen. They don't afraid ISIS. They thirsty for people like that. They don't afraid terrorists. Mm -hmm. Police officers in New York City are not afraid of gangbangers. They're not afraid. Remember Bloods and Crips and all yeah, that? They're afraid of that. Yeah, Police thing. officers in New York City not afraid of murderers, criminals, people who flake, flake out and decide to run amok. Police officers in New York City afraid one thing. Internal affairs. Yeah, yeah. Internal affairs. It is. Internal affairs in New York City have one mission. Jail corrupt police officers. And because police know that internal affairs checks every line item, they make sure that their line items are correct. In New York City, when a police officer kills somebody in the line of duty, he stands down and they investigate the killing. And the commissioner needs to make sure that it was a lawful kill in the line of duty, that he had no choice, so that the police department could stand behind him. If not, you're going to be charged. Yeah. And they You're are, going to be charged. They charged. So they tell you the weight of that gun on the hip. Heavy. Mm -hmm. Because when you draw that gun, when people watch this guy and say, and, 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 and yes, there will be failures. Nothing is absolute. Yes, there will be people who are racist and people who do wrong. And I understand that. But you have to look at the whole thing. You cannot, you cannot let the best be the enemy of the good. You can't say that because we're not 100%, 50% not good enough. We have to get to a point where we say it is no longer acceptable for us to have a corrupt and rogue police service. Stop telling us that our police service is a gang. End it. Clean right. it up. Fix it. The, not security pri borders. the Prime Minister of the country has the responsibility for all of those things. Mm -hmm. The Parliament is a function of the Constitution of the Republic. The Supreme Law. The Supreme Law breeds the, the par breeds the Parliament into existence, speaks it into existence. The Parliament has the authority today, all 41, if they wanted to fix it, to abolish the police service as an act of law. It is a law that speaks the police service into law, and you can abolish it, and you can amend the Constitution to abolish it. 
That's the power of the parliament. 41 seats that represent 1.4 million people. And then you write a proper law that speaks a proper police service into existence. Right. Stop telling me about first division, second division, third division nonsense. I don't want to hear that. I am telling Trinidad Tobago, everything that is broken in this country can be fixed. Right. It is broken by design. It is deliberate. It serves somebody's interests. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that Keith Rowley and Kamala Prasad Bissessa, who have spent a life agitating to get to this position, are insipid, incompetent, or stupid. You can't tell me that. I don't accept that. What I accept is that they are complicit in the destruction of the country. Mm -hmm. Kamala Prasad Bissessa has made decisions against the people. Keith Rowley continues to do that to this day. And the day the people in this country understood that the reason for government is to serve them, that's what the Constitution says. That's when, that, that's when we would actually fix. Is when the people can wrap that concept around the head. The purpose and responsibility of government is the well-being of the citizenry. End the story. That's their whole purpose. If they're not doing it, then we have no need for government, period. Tony, the fact that there is an SEA tomorrow is a failure of the Minister of Education today. Yeah. Anthony Garcia, Tim Gopi Singh, and as far back as you care to go. None of these prime ministers have had a vision for the people of the country that said, I will tie the performance of the nation 10 years from now to the performance of the schools today. Mm -hmm. The Chinese say the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. It is not too late to fix Trinidad and Tobago. You know. But you're not going to fix Trinidad and Tobago by continuing the same foolishness that led us to here. All right. All right. You have to have a starting point. And the, the time is now. Trinidad and Tobago, the time is now. It is now. We don't have another chance at this, you know, because if we can't bring change within the next general election, really and truly, uh, just... Look at Venezuela, look at Haiti, look at these countries that are totally falling apart. Look at, look at how did they get there. And you would realize that we are, we've been taking pages out of their book for the past 50 plus years. You know, and, and they are a prime example for us to see where we need to put the brakes on, stop, bring some level of sanity into the mix of things. And like you say, for the key element, accountability and transparency. Tony, 40 years ago, India was the cesspool of the world. 40 years ago, yeah. 30 years ago, India embarked on a redevelopment exercise, exercise, the largest democracy in the world, over a billion people. That is a democracy, a billion people. China is China because China is a dictatorship, and China could say, by the stroke of a pen, that is what we're doing. Mm. But in India, it's a democracy, so the right, the, the rule of law must apply, the, the, the people's opinion must apply. And yet, government was able to embark on a leadership trust that has India now as a superpower, that has India as the largest middle class in the world. Mm -hmm. There are more middle class people in India than there are people in America, Canada, England, Spain, France, Germany, together. <laughs> and we have to take a break for chairs and a Five, four, three, two, one. The ladies, it's your night of Saturday, May 12th. The exclusive La Soledad State Maracas St. Joseph Kabuki the Black event is about you and a special someone all detected in black. The night before Mother's Day, yes, we bring to you the show music, classic people, two premium bars, two food courts, a red wine on entry, $500 drink inclusive, salsa, Latin dance off. Saturday, May 12th, from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. is the perfect gift for mom. They get $200 advance, and here this five lucky moms will be serenaded on stage. And at one lucky mother, they leave Kabuki's back with all smiles. Kabuki's hotline at 293-1145-786-1145 or 772-2661. and 7 FM, the official station for Kabuki's back, and is powered by Higher Level. Is the perfect gift for mom. Advanced tickets only $200 available at Cleese for Spain, Bollywood Black Rep, Hearty Foods, Arima, Fat International, Sylvester's Bar, In Excess, La Luna Bar, Aruca, Salon Shops of Arima, Diamonds by Seren South, Kirby's Barbershop Tribunas. Of course, the hotlines once again 293 1145 
786-1455 or 772-2661. And if you can get tickets as well as Miss at Mr. One Stop Mart in Arima on the old road. Segment, the last Saturday in Stamina. For no extra cost, call out everybody for Saturday at noon. And anybody who would like to be a part of the team, come on here. Hey, listen, we talked last night, we want to open up this cafe. We want to move up this, we want to look for places where you're going to build another. Downstairs, you make that cafe, people come for lunch and eat it. Yeah, open the offices upstairs. Yeah. You can generate some good we funds, we have to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Last time we had a nice little meeting, we told you, and me and Sean and Felicia, when I called you about today, those are a lot of ads, chairs. So last time I just remember to invite everybody. Yeah, I'm to move you guys. I don't think I'm going to Thank you. Trinity ETC at yahoo.com. Website trinityetc.com. Miami branch Trinity Lighting ETC 17871 Biscay Boulevard, Aventura, Florida. Telephone there 1305 932 0727. Like us on Facebook. Facebook, Trinity Lighting ETC Limited, and ease your stress away. Trinity, your one-stop shop. Sense and sensibility. Sense and sensibility. Yeah, and we're back. And we were speaking before we broke for the ad, and I wanted to tell you, Tony, what, what, what resonated with me is the idea that without a vision, the people, without vision, the people perish. We've never had leadership that has come to the people and said, this is the problem, we propose this as a solution, let's discuss. Yes. Let's discuss. Because that's what we do every day and every night. Mm -hmm. we we in a constant conversation with the people of Trinidad and Tobago and we're putting ourselves on the line. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy for some keyboard warriors to just attack you without yeah, realizing yeah. the so, size of the effort so. that this takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But without a vision, the people perish. The PNM and the UNC have to account for their stewardship of this nation. Agreed. The banks in Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. have gone rogue. Mm -hmm. They're forcing the public, hurting and corralling the public, and leaving them literally no choice other than shut your account down and take all their money home, or put up with our gouging fees, our lack of service, and are forcing you into an online banking system when Trinidadians prefer to go to the bank. Mm -hmm. And the people who are abroad who are telling us, you know, this is how it is in America. Okay, but this is Trinidad. 
We don't want to hear about America. We want to hear about America. We do like you and we live there. Mm-hmm. Chinadians want something. Let's give Chinadians that. If there was a competent banking in, um, environment, the banks would do better. They're not. They've closed off into a little clique. They form the Bankers Association. They're making their decisions. And the government is not representing the people. Yesterday, Carolyn Page. He, she is, I think she's one of the owners of Question Mark Entertainment. They're doing massive work taking Trinidad Entertainment outside. They bring Will Smith and people like him here regular. And they do all of these these programs. I think they are the people behind Kess the Band and all mm. of that, right? And she posted on Facebook that she can't believe that she went to the bank to deposit a bank in a, a check and the bank said they're not taking that check because it's not from this bank. I think I saw that. I saw that post, yeah. But it's insane. It is insane. You can't keep moving <laughs> the target. You can't keep changing the system yeah. and have the people off balance. And the change them in flight too, huh? That's the point. When you think that you've settled into the insanity, the insanity broadens and yeah. it gets worse. The public, are res- they're entitled. They need to understand what they vote is a hiring process and that they're entitled to explanation, accountability, transparency. They're, they're entitled to their say. The Progressive Empowerment Party talks about a quality of life index, a website that asks, are you happy? If not, why not? What in your world has you unhappy? Mm-hmm. It's hard to get a job. It's hard to get medical attention. Too much traffic. I'm not secure at night. I'm worried about my country. Whatever is bothering you, tell us. Government needs to be instructed by the people. Government needs to understand that the well-being of every citizen is their reason for existing. Ah, that's right. Say it again, one more time. The, the, but that's the truth. <laughs> and we need and we need to put that out there. And we, we, we need to put that out there as much as possible. Chinese need to understand that. That that everything is the government's responsibility. Yes. Everything. The social management of the country. You must compare your nation with functional nations. Of the 183 nations, many of them are doing well. Canada, Sweden, Switzerland, New York, Iceland. I mean, these countries are dreams to live in. We don't have an idea or an understanding of what it is like to live in a nation where everything works. We live in a country where nothing works. Nothing works. There are people who are fed up of the fact that they have no water in their taps three and four days for the week, that they fall in tank and fall in bucket and living around a water cycle. And they've been led astray by the PNM and the UNC time and time again, and promises have been made. And I don't understand why each constituency has not been given responsibility for their own water so that you could choose to buy a house based on water. That if I want to live in Sangri Grandi, Sangri Grandi have water 24 7. I will live there. I like to be in. And I'm being honest with you. Digo Martin West has Shagaramas. Shagaramas has one of the purest aquifers in the Caribbean. They use the water quality there to test all other waters. That's the, that is the standard they test it against. A pipeline from Tucker Valley to Rich Plain and Coveen will give all of those people water. We don't even have that as a conversation. Where are we going? Anyway. Madness. Anyway, Trinidad and Tobago, thanks again for having us on, as well as, don't forget, come down uh, 19 Sanmo Avenue, uh, 12 noon, have your say, let your voices be heard, come and meet the executives, and uh, again, any ideas, any thoughts in your mind, anything you want to have addressed, that is definitely the place. This is 12 noon, 19 Sanmo Avenue, Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, come through, this party is for you. Yeah. In our last couple minutes here before we go, we need to hammer home. Trinidadians, you need to understand. This is not about personalities. Stop treating elections like beauty pageants. This is not about who you like, who you love, and who you want to slow dance with. This is about who you want to hire capably to run the country to ensure that health care, education, security, public works, public utilities, cost of food, home ownership that these issues become the national conversation, not cat and geometry and roti politics. It is time to get beyond the bacchanal and noise that has passed for representation from these two failed political organizations. And until somebody in the PNM, don't give me rhetoric. Don't tell me about a PNM education. That's nonsense. Yeah. Tell me what the PNM has done for this country because I look around 
and there is nothing at any point to instill any pride in any citizen that this is our country. Mm -hmm. Look at the pitch lake. No one accounts for the pitch lake. Well, we talk about that. Look That's at tourism sick. in Tobago. Tobago should be the number one tourist destination in the in world. Yes, in the world. We have the best coral reefs. We have the nylon pool. We have pigeon point. Old we have forest. old world forest. We have, I mean, we burn down the, 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 the water wheel in oh, Annasville. We are, Tobago had so many things that <laughs> ah. you could have marketed to the world. We are outside of the hurricane oh, belt. We should be the biggest tourist destination mm -hmm. in the Caribbean year in, year out. We're not. And we need to understand that without a vision, the people perish. Without a vision, the nation collapses. We, Trinidad and Tobago, have an opportunity to put all those wrong things right. Stop talking PNM, UNC politics, and start talking representation of the people. Start looking for political parties and, polit and politicians or people who are putting themselves up to serve and ask them, what are your plans? What are your policies? What are your ideas? How, are, how is it going to be measured? How is it going to be financed? I want a vision for a country where Robert Amar, Gary Abood, Atto Bolden, I want to see people make themselves available to serve and, and have given the opportunity. Michael Phillips, uh, I mean, Brian Chinlian, these are people, Dwight York. We need to bring them into the conversation. We need to get all of the activists actualized. Just, just think of this, just dwell on this one thing. National Lotteries Control Board. It's not a positive or a healthy thing, and you shouldn't be in lottery because it's not a good thing for a society. But if you're going to be using lottery as a game and you're going to justify it, peg national lottery to sport development in the country. Mm -hmm. Say all of the proceeds from National Lottery Control Board, all of those billions of dollars invested in the development of sport in this country, and see where the people go. Booyah! You win with that. Yeah. I love it. Thanks a lot, all of you, for being with us today. Thanks, Robert Amar and the 104.7 family yes. for inviting us on today, for giving us the opportunity to discuss these issues. We look forward to you all tomorrow. We're back here at 11 to noon with Robert Amar and um, reminding you that we are at 19 Stanmore Avenue this Saturday at noon. The entire country is invited. If you want to bring stuff to share, sandwiches, cake, biscuits, you don't have to bring anything, but if you want to, feel free. Join us, come be a party team, come be a part of the national conversation dedicated to building a better nation. Yes. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.